The coast of British Columbia, Canada is one of the planet's most pristine and abundant marine ecosystems. This is where Mainstream Canada operates 29 fish farm leases. Mainstream is a subsidiary of the Norwegian-owned company Cermak, whose head office is in Oslo, Norway. Cermak is currently the second largest salmon farming company in British Columbia, with operations in the Clayquot Sound UNESCO Biosphere Reserve and the Broughton Archipelago. This situation is unique, for here the Atlantic salmon are being farmed right amongst the wild Pacific salmon. Here, the waters are home to thousands of dolphins, the highest concentration of killer whales in the world, and one of the last vestiges of the grizzly bear and the spirit bear, otherwise known as the komodi. All of this is supported by the wild salmon. Five species of Pacific salmon proliferate the coast. Chum, sockeye, pink, coho, and the king of all salmon, the Chinook. Every year, millions of Pacific salmon return from the open ocean to the rivers of their birth. This ancient cycle has created one of the planet's most dramatic and dynamic ecosystems, feeding and supporting hundreds of species, including human beings. Wild Fish in British Columbia supports a $500 million commercial fishing industry, as well as a $10 billion tourism industry. For thousands of years, West Coast First Nations have relied on the return of the salmon for survival. And today, this connection is still very real and still very much alive. This film has been produced for the shareholders of the company Cermak to help them understand the effects of their company's operations here in British Columbia, how they are involved, what is at stake, and how things can change. Salmon has been a staple since the beginning of time for our people. There's no question that the sea lice uh, on these farms are killing the wild salmon. We're now seeing the, on the horizon now, the extinction of salmon populations due just to sea lice. Without wild salmon, we won't have any wildlife. We won't have bears, eagles. Catching a wild salmon on a fly is the pursuit of many people around the world. Well, on a personal level, of course, it's, it's you know, the, the end of a business that I've spent over 20 years putting everything I have into. I cannot watch another river go down on my ship. You know, if we don't have salmon, we're, we're no longer consider ourselves First Nations and, and salmon people. The Broughton Archipelago is a series of islands and inlets around northern Vancouver Island. This is where the lice problem was first noticed by fisherman Chris Bennett in the year 2000. Chris and his family have run a fishing lodge here in the Broughton since the 1980s. Oh, it's an incredible area, absolutely incredible. I mean, fish in all the rivers, I mean, just unbelievable numbers of fish. Just like the proverbial, you know, you could walk across their backs, you literally could in these streams. I mean, the mass of fish in all these streams would be so dense, I mean, it would just be a solid black mass of fish moving through all the pools. That's Viner and Bond and all the rest of them. And now, I mean, last year you could you know, have a hard trouble finding a, a chum salmon in Viner. And the year that after we saw that huge amount of sea lice on the on the fry, there was the same same thing. We saw a decline like we'd never seen in the pink stocks after that. Very dramatic. The absence was most um, noticed in the area where the fish farms were. I mean, the, the fish disappeared from that area while they were still in some of the best years we'd had in, in, a, in a long time, everywhere else on the coast. Probably the best thing would be for them to uh, look at a map of the coast and see how Vancouver Island forms a little funnel where all the fish heading south 
have to migrate through and of course that's why it's a big area, biggest concentration of killer whales in the world right here for that reason because it's a big concentration of salmon. So they're putting these farms on a highway for all these migrating fish. Millions, millions of fish, no, I mean millions of returning adults in some cases, many millions. From a management point of view I think that's extremely negligent. The salmon-rich waters on the BC coast has spawned hundreds of wilderness and fish-based businesses, ranging from small rustic retreats to some of the world's most elite fishing lodges, attracting thousands of people. Today, tourism is a $10 billion industry. That means there's a lot of people coming to this province. And the people want to see the reality of what is British Columbia. They want to see firsthand wild salmon, grizzly bears, eagles, killer whales. And people come from around the world, from every country there is. But they all want that special experience of being able to see and catch a salmon. And it's a real shame to see once mighty rivers full of fish with no fish. Our operators are, are pointing out that uh, there's been a drop off in wildlife. Our resident whales in Johnson Strait are not talking to each other because they're too busy hunting for food that doesn't exist. But without wild salmon, we won't have any wildlife. We won't have bears, eagles. And uh, our members, our nature based members, basically depend on the wildlife product of British Columbia. No, well, that's that's the that's the that's the insanity of all of this, right? Is that sea lice were were shown to be um, have exactly the same effect on on European wild Atlantic salmon and European sea trout. Well documented, our data fits hand in glove with 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 those data from from Europe, and so this has been on the records for more than a decade. The scientific community again has spoken with a with a unified voice in Europe. This has happened, and in fact, must happen. Just basic first principles of ecology, right? If you bring this number of potential hosts together, right, you will have disease problems. We, we predicted it, that would happen in British Columbia. It's now happening, just as it's now happening in Chile. So if, if one were to take all of this research that's been published to date um, and sum it up into, into, into one you know, piece of information, it is that industrial scale salmon farming in British Columbia equals the extinction of wild salmon, which then means the extinction of our wild ecosystem, and it's going to happen in the next decade. The, the, the level of confidence we can have in these conclusions is, is extraordinarily high. Uh, as with uh, um, any scenario where there's a lot of money involved, there will always be manufactured um, contrarian arguments. However, one only needs to look at the weight of evidence that uh, on one side you've got the entire, literally the entire independent scientific community. On the other side, you have a small handful of scientists with vested interests in the industry. All arguments that support the business as usual argument have a vested interest in business as usual. Again, the weight of evidence from the scientific, the independent scientific community sits squarely in the most prestigious, in fact, the most prestigious journals of the world. The, the, the whole premise of this argument is based on people not knowing. Alex Morton is a biologist who has been living in and studying the Broughton Archipelago for over 20 years. This year, Alex applied for a permit to transport the wild salmon fry past Cermak's fish farms, an attempt to save some of the few remaining fish from sea lice. So, yeah, I'm very disappointed. This morning, you know, I'm out here in the Birdwood Islands near the Cermak farm Birdwood, and um, Normally, there would be thousands of little chum fry from the Meetup or the Viner River. But last year, there was only 89 chum salmon that went back to that river. And I personally hold the Cermak farm responsible for that because those little chums would come out, sit in the islands here and feeding, and become covered with lice before they had scales or could handle it at all. 
Once a whale biologist, Alex Morton has been forced to focus her studies on the impacts the farms are having in her backyard. 